Welcome back. Malian government troops backed by French artillery fire have fended off an attack by heavily armed militants who attacked government positions in the strategic town of Gao. At least three civilians died in the heavy exchanges between government soldiers and militants. Malian soldiers have been conducting house-to-house -house searches to clear the town of all radical elements. Let's look at this report for more on that. Those close to Faisal Halidou were overwhelmed with grief. <laughs> On Monday in Gao, they were bringing the 31-year-old to his final resting place. Faisal was one of three civilians killed during the fighting in the streets between Malian soldiers and jihadi radicals. The clashes were very violent. Residents of Gao cannot forget them. I don't know if this will continue. But based on what we saw, the city is not safe. We are afraid. We are afraid of ambushes, things like that, of people coming into the city. We want the local people to work with the army to find these people. A number of witnesses have confirmed that they saw a French helicopter pounding the central police station of Gao. The building was occupied by radical Mujao fighters, who may still be there. It was from there that they fired on Malian soldiers on Sunday. The Malians returned the fire. The clashes between soldiers and radicals lasted several hours. Reinforcements are arriving. By God, if I find a Mujao fighter in my house, I will slit his throat. French soldiers arrived several minutes later, and their presence proved decisive. Their artillery fire apparently forced the Mujao fighters to stop shooting and to dig in. But the jihadi radicals have promised to remain in Gao and will not admit defeat. The cardinals are expected to convene a conclave to elect a new pope, this following the unexpected announcement by Pope Benedict XVI of his resignation. Pope Benedict was elected to head the Roman Catholic Church in 2005 after the death of Pope John Paul II. Details in this report. Pope Benedict XVI's announcement that he intends to resign on the 28th of February because at 85 he is too old stunned cardinals in Rome. This is the first time a pope has willingly resigned in nearly 600 years. In today's world, subject to so many rapid changes and shaken by questions of deep relevance for the life of faith, in order to govern the bark of St. Peter and proclaim the gospel, both strength of mind and body are necessary. Strength, which in the last few months has deteriorated in me to the extent that I have had to recognize my incapacity to adequately fulfill the ministry entrusted to me. As of the 28th of February, Roman Catholic cardinals will start a conclave to designate a new pope who should be in place before Easter Sunday on the 31st of March. Pope Benedict XVI says he will retire to a monastery. Pope Benedict XVI was one of the oldest popes to be elected eight years ago in 2005 after Pope John Paul II's death. Pope Benedict XVI faced a number of scandals, including the sexual and physical abuse of children by priests. Although the Pope said there would be zero tolerance for clergy involved in abuse, many Catholics were shocked and disappointed that his words were not followed by firm action. Another scandal dogged the papacy involving money laundering and infighting within the Vatican State. His personal butler was tried and sentenced for revealing the extent of the scandal. However, Benedict XVI is also credited for continuing dialogue with different religions. However, this dialogue with Muslims and Jews was controversial at times, particularly in Africa and Lebanon, where he appealed for the coexistence of different religions. Anger is growing among European consumers following the discovery of horse meat in groceries in Ireland. French supermarket chains reacted to the incident by removing frozen meals containing meat from shelves. Governments across Europe have opened investigations into the alleged tracing of a percentage of horse meat in beef products. Let's look at this report for more on that. 
meat instead of beef in frozen foods was first discovered by Irish food inspectors last January. The scandal broke in Britain when frozen meals were discovered to contain 60% horse meat. You'd think about it, but no, I, mean, I think it's been there for years and years. And it's only taken us this length of time to see that the horse meat is there. Most French supermarket chains have withdrawn frozen meals containing meat from shelves. Although so far there's no declared threat to public health, the controversy has revealed the complexity of the food industry supply chains. Until now, no one was aware of the extent of the problems of traceability. We don't buy meat. We buy lasagna from our industrial partner who provides us with high-quality lasagna. The problem is that they, like us, were fooled. This is fraud, which is why we filed a complaint. Investigations are underway across the European Union. The affair is helping to clarify a very torturous system that involves a great number of middlemen. The horse meat was purchased in Romania using a number of middlemen on behalf of the French food trading company called Spangaro. Spangaro supplied another French-owned company called Comigel that is a factory in Luxembourg. This is where the horse meat was used to make frozen meals. The investigation will help elucidate exactly where the fraud began along the food industry's supply chain. As far as I can see, a business was established here to organize real fraud. It is very clear to me that the mafia is at work here to cheat the consumers and to make a lot of money. The question of traceability is being discussed by French ministers with the French food industry on Monday. One of the main questions is how horse meat that is much cheaper than beef could be used on such a wide scale without being detected before. Time now to take our second break. Could be that back. Stay tuned. At Echo Bank, we see a great future. One that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries. It's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking. With enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure while individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African, and EcoBank is the Pan-African bank. Time now to join Fatou Jassi for a look at the sports news. Fatou. Thank you very much, Aisatou. Nigeria are the champions of Africa after the Super Eagles completed a 1-0 win over Burkina Faso in the finals of the Africa Cup of Nations in South Africa. The win is Nigeria's start of the tournament and ensured coach Stephen Kashi becomes the second person to win the tournament both as a player and a coach. We have details of that story in this report. Nigerians were proud and holding wild victory parties. They had been dreaming of an Africa Cup victory for 19 years since the last victory. After the final win over Burkina Faso, they pumped up the volume. When they play this first match and the second match, I know that these guys are going to take us where we are going, man. You know, I know that they are going to play the champion and we're going to kick back now Faso out. Back to the match, the Nigerian fans went wild when the Eagles scored the only goal of the match. Then back in Lagos, nobody was missing a beat. In front of giant screens, it seemed the entire country was cheering the team on. When the final whistle blew, they were all winners. We said we were doing the dirty. We are going to do it. We are the greatest in Africa again. We are back. We are back. We are happy today because it's been long we have won this cup. Since 1994, they play to win. And they are determined to leave the trophy. So we are very grateful. It was one goal that drove away 19 years of bad luck, during which time they had to settle for third place. This was soothing after a difficult year for Nigeria. 
and the Burkina Bay team came so close. People were disappointed, though the team was the underdog. In Ouagadougou, people were sad.